Today, I'd like to talk about all the changes that can happen to women's physical appearance during menopause. I want to offer some clarity on why these changes happen and what you can do to both prepare yourself and manage these symptoms. So hair is affected by, the, by hormones and we see that in pregnancy um, and then post-pregnancy and also in perimenopause and menopause. And typically, but not always, hair will become drier, more brittle, more easily broken and thinner during perimenopause and menopause. And this can be quite distressing to patients, especially if they've had a beautiful head of hair and then they see it thinning and declining in quality. And it really is due to hormonal change. And there is, there's nothing we can do about menopause. Um, it's, it's going to happen to every woman. But um, there are certain things that you can do to make sure that you can minimize hair changes. Um, and the firstly is making sure that you eat a balanced diet because not only do hormones impact on hair, but so does things like making sure that you've got adequate vitamins, minerals, protein, um, calories, all of these things can have an impact. If you have other symptoms that are suggestive of other underlying conditions, for, for example, um, any problems with thyroid, um, that can also impact on hair. So if you're worried about that, it's worth having blood tests to exclude things like thyroid dysfunction um, and you can test at the same time for any nutritional deficiencies so things like vitamin b um, b12 um, folate iron um, and vitamin d can all be tested at the same time there's a massive industry around um, preying on women's hair insecurities and lots of products claiming that they will um, you know improve or return your hair to how it was pre-menopausally but the truth is that they really it's it's very hard to make an impact on what's going on under the scalp where your hair is actually formed by things that by, by things like shampoos and conditioners um so shampoos and conditioners that are moisturizing will make hair less brittle but it won't improve hair growth per se and I think that's really important to remember because you can end up spending huge amounts of money on products that probably don't work. There are certain types of hair loss associated with perimenopause and menopause that it is very important that you speak to your doctor about because they can be progressive. And if so, if you notice that you have got distinct bald patches, particularly in circles, or that your the front of your hair or the sides of your hair are receding and your hairline is going back, then it is really important that you speak to your doctor. But with any with any hair loss, a conversation with your doctor is entirely justified. It can be the sign of any of other underlying health conditions, and you shouldn't feel like it's a trivial problem at all. You are totally justified in seeing your doctor and potentially being referred to a dermatologist if if required. Skin changes are another result of hormonal changes. And again, another distressing symptom um, and it, it's not an issue of vanity it's just an issue of how women feel in, in, in themselves and their own self-confidence and I don't think that anybody should have their distress belittled by saying oh it's just your skin it's just a factor of it's just what happens when you get older the skin changes that we commonly see are loosening sagging wrinkling um, wrinkling of the skin, but also an increase in irritability. So you, there can be an increase in redness, in rashes, in um, in something called rosacea, where you get flushing and spots. In in simple hormonal acne, cystic acne can develop. Um, sometimes, rather than the dryness that we would typically see, you can also see an increase in oiliness of the skin. Similar to hair, like if you have a new skin condition, just because you think it's associated with uh, perimenopause, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't seek advice of a doctor, particularly if you've noticed things like um, spots, new spots or, um, or redness or flushing or rashes, because there's often things that, that can be done. Using a good moisturizer, it doesn't have to be fancy. It can just needs to be a very moisturizing mo moisturizer can help. Um, as can using HRT, which can help restore the, the estrogen and therefore restore the, um, the kind of plumpness and fullness of, of skin and elasticity. Um, so there are things that can be done, but there is a natural kind of aging process that can't be re reversed. Um, and that just that is where kind of menopause and aging go along alongside each other.
so weight gain is a common symptom or a common symptoms probably the wrong word but a common occurrence in perimenopause and menopause and as we all get older we all tend to gain weight um with every decade of life you do gain a pro you know, proportion of extra weight um and that is you, you gain fat and you also lose muscle mass um but women do report gaining a disproportionate amount of weight during menopause that they would have previously found fairly easy to lose that they suddenly find much harder to lose and this is a result of changing hormones which then have a knock on impact on metabolism weight doesn't just it's not just about increasing weight all over the body there's there's an increase in 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 fat distribution around the middle um particularly around the um around the abdomen around um the front of the belly and also around internal organs and fat is redistributed redistributed from the periphery so it's less on the hips and bust and arms and legs and face and redistributed centrally so even if the scales aren't moving that much it can be it can be visually um your body shape can change and women can find that um quite quite distressing what can be done so we can't do anything about reversing aging so we just not you know with every with every year goes by we are just a bit older um making sure that you're eating the right things and not allowing yourself to get so hungry that you end up choosing the wrong things um out of kind of desperation and and being really really hungry um making sure that you avoid calories in liquid so sugary drinks juices um are a um an easy way of getting calories that you don't need making sure that when you do eat a meal you eat enough that makes you full with the right nutrient dense foods particularly like unrefined foods and and protein reducing alcohol because there's hidden calories in alcohol and making sure that you exercise in the way that's right for you so what's right for one person is going to be different to what's right for another um but making but movement just general movement is really important whatever exercise it is that um that floats your boat um is good if it involves movement so i think the other thing to say about weight gain is that a little bit of weight gain is probably inevitable and um we just need to learn to be kind to ourselves because it's it's not it's not the end of the world to gain a few pounds and um as long as you are healthy that's really what matters um but that's it is always easier said than done and it's particularly hard when we're bombarded with images of what traditional beauty looks like and that tends to be looking young and looking slim um but i just wanted to present a kind of balanced way of making of un of understanding that weight gain is an issue there are things that can be done about it but we also need to be a bit kind to ourselves because aging and menopause is is inevitable So our faces look how they do because of underlying bone structure and then superimposed facial muscles and subcutaneous fat and then the skin over the top. And because hormones impact on everything, they impact on muscles and um where we lay down fat and also on bone structure, our faces can change in perimenopause and menopause and that's the reason why. making sure that you have enough subcutaneous fat is um one way of making sure that your that your face doesn't change a huge amount making sure that your skin is moisturized keeping out of the sun um are all ways of just trying to prevent those changes that some women do find really distressing and um whilst we can't change aging and we can't change menopause those are a few things that can be done to just reduce those changes So I think it's I think it is really important that we don't just dismiss worries about appearance as just vanity and and um belittle women's concerns over it. I think that in our in our culture and society so much emphasis is placed upon looks and yet women are criticized for worrying when their looks change. and it's 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 just so hypocritical and so wrong like we can't expect women to not care when we've placed so much emphasis on it for their entire lives and i think it's just i just wanted to kind of acknowledge that i think every woman has some sense or pride in how they in how they look and nobody likes that to change and i think it's just i think it's just something something to acknowledge 
I think it is it is a valid concern if you are upset by how your looks are changing in response to perimenopause and menopause. 